Hello friends. Today in this session we will discuss traffic islands and their classifications. An island is a defined area between traffic lanes for control of vehicle movements. Within an intersection area, a median or an outer separation is considered to be an island. They minimize the area of conflict and establish physical channels for movement of vehicle without conflict. And therefore, a traffic island is painted or solid structure that is placed on a road to control traffic. These islands can be either circular or narrow strip that runs between two roads at an acute angle. These are important form of traffic markings. The functions of traffic islands are many. The first one is direct and separate tra traffic to minimize conflict. Traffic islands play important role in allowing each vehicle movement and these are useful to reduce the number of points where vehicle can conflict with each other while moving across the intersection. Separate traffic streams. They are used to separate the traffic stream along the movements or across the movements of vehicles and therefore traffic islands prevent undesirable movement by providing proper guidance to moving vehicles. Traffic islands serve to provide stopping space for pedestrians while crossing a street and they provide small shrubs and plants allow for space to keep traffic control devices like traffic signals. In addition to these functions, Traffic islands also add to the traffic safety and traffic capacity of the road. Traffic islands generally serve more than one function, but may be classified into six separate groups. And the first is a roundabout. It is a central island, may be circular, elliptical or in any other shape, located at the center of the intersection for channelization of the traffic. Second is channelizing island. These are used to separate, control or direct the movement of traffic streams. These are used to reduce area, angle of conflict and the speed. Their usual shape is triangular and they are integral part of intersection design. Then divisional island. Divisional islands are provided on four or more lane highway to segregate the opposing traffic. They can also be provided at intersections to divide the through traffic from the turning traffic. The median, median islands are provided to separate opposing traffic stream, usually along the highway or in approaches to an intersection. Refuse islands are provided to provide space for pedestrians to cross the street, the refuse islands are for pedestrians and not for vehicles and they allow pedestrians to wait until the vehicle movement stops before crossing the street. And the last is loading island. Now loading islands are provided at bus stops for protection to bus riders. Let us now discuss each of these traffic islands in a bit detail. The first is roundabouts. IRC 65 talks about design of roundabouts and capacity of roundabouts. And these are considered to be the safest type of intersections because here crossing is completely eliminated. All vehicles are forced to move around a central island and therefore crossings are converted into merging and diverging movements. They are important intersections when right turn is heavy or number of approaches are more than four. But they have a limited capacity to handle traffic. A roundabout can be a simple roundabout like this, or it can be a very complex roundabout like this. And this is also called a magic roundabout. It is situated in UK. And where you have, where you have five roundabouts within a huge roundabout. And this is considered to be the most confusing and most complex design of a roundabout in the world. Then second is channelizing islands. Now channelizing islands are provided on each arm of a roundabout. These are channelizing islands or 
they can also be provided on auxiliary lanes of a junction to direct and separate opposing traffic movements at roundabout or diverging and merging movements in auxiliary lanes efficiently. These are provided to discourage direct movement of the vehicles like this and therefore these splitter islands or challenging islands they force the vehicle to move around the central island to make a right turn. They are also called splitter islands because they split two diverging movements at intersections, right turn and left turn. These islands are typically in physical form where there is sufficient space to accommodate curved islands. And these islands are effective only when they are provided in physical form. The challenging islands control speed and path of vehicles at the intersection. They control angle of conflict. They separate conflicting traffic streams. They provide shelter to vehicles waiting to carry out certain maneuvers like right turn. They assist pedestrians to cross the street and reduce the excessive carriageway area and therefore limit the vehicle paths. And they are also used to locate traffic control devices. The challenging islands can be either in the raised form, that is in physical form, or in flushed form. The raised channelizing islands have their height above the pavement surface. And these are shielding pedestrians and refugee area. They are also provided to placement for placement of traffic control devices. They prohibit certain traffic movements and separate high volume opposing traffic flow. The flushed type of channelizing islands are provided on high speed corridors rural highways or expressways for merging and diverging lanes. They can also be provided where frequent snow clearing is required. And they are also provided in area where you have the space constraint, particularly in urban area, or when you need a temporary channelization before construction. But channelizing, the flush type of channelizing islands are not effective in prohibiting or preventing all or disrupting traffic movements. And they are also hazardous to be used for pedestrians or for refugee area. Third type of island is divisional island. And it is a raised median or island that is placed in middle of the multi-lane highway to separate opposing lane of traffic and reduce the risk of head-on collision. Now, they are also called separators and these are provided on multi-lane roads to segregate the opposing traffic or maybe sometime the traffic moving in the same direction but following the different rules. For example, here in case of an expressway, both streams of traffic are moving in the same direction but they will be governed by different traffic rules and therefore they are separated by a divisional island parallel to the traffic. Usually these are used to separate roads, service road or on turning or acceleration lanes from the road traffic. Median island. There is not much difference or there is not much distinction between divisional island and median and these islands function almost like a divisional island but are strictly provided for opposing traffic stream. Median islands are provided to separate opposing traffic stream to avoid head-on collision. Median islands can be raised or flushed like this, or it can be even depressed median also like this. Now, wide medians serve additional purpose of providing refugee area for the pedestrians, opportunity of constructing storage lane at junctions, and emergency vehicle breakdown safety area or even some time to widen the road in future date from two lane to three lane or four lane to six lane. Now refugee island. The, the main function of a refugee island is to provide a place of safety for pedestrians who cannot cross the entire carriageway at one time because of the width of the road. At grade median refugee allow pedestrians to wait safely for crossing wide streets with long signal rotation. And that is the pedestrian refuse island or area where pedestrian can move from this point 
to this island in one go and then in the second stage he, he or she can move from this island to the median or the second curve line. IRC 70 and IRC 103 provides general guidance on placement of pedestrian refuge island in urban areas. The provision of pedestrian refuges is useful traffic management technique on pedestrian routes near junctions or roundabouts, enabling the pedestrians to deal with one particular direction of traffic at a time. As I told you, when the street is white, pedestrian cannot cross the entire street in one go and therefore he will cross the street in two stages and then he will use the refuse island to rest in between. It enables the pedestrian to look for gaps in only one direction at a time. And this is the effective way to help crossing pedestrians and also reduce pedestrian accidents. This should be made mandatory on all roads with four lane or more. As far as design of refuse island is concerned, a pedestrian refuse is usually placed at or near the center of single carriageway if the width available to traffic in the two directions are greater than 4 meter. Traffic islands and median should be adequate in size to accommodate the length of a pram or wheelchair and pusher. And therefore, it is recommended that at the minimum width of the median should be 2 meter where we need to provide a refusing island. At staggered pelican crossings, including those without guardrails, two courses of tactile paving linking the two curb edges should be provided with the rest of the central reserve paved normally. And traffic islands and medians should be accompanied by dropped curbs on both footpath. The refugee islands should be provided with non-mountable type vertical curb which should be suitably reflectorized and illuminated. The sixth one is loading island. And loading islands are provided at bus stop for protection to bus riders. And the size depends upon the number of bus riders, that is passenger demand at a bus stop. And the minimum of two meter wide loading island is recommended to be provided wherever it is necessary. Streets with moderate to high transit frequency, transit ridership, pedestrian volume or bicycling volume can utilize boarding islands to maintain in-lane stops and provide separation to users. Platforms can be configured for level or near level boarding and a official memorandum issued by Ministry of Road Transport and Highways Government of India in 2021 focuses towards developing the guidelines for such facilities in India also. The design recommendations or considerations for these loading islands use reflective signage or other visible raised element on the loading corner of the island, like keep left or keep right. An accessible ramp should be placed at the intersection end of the island entering the crosswalk. And if there is no crosswalk at the intersection, install the crosswalk with a refuse island tip to protect pedestrians and the width of this refuse island should be at least 5 feet. Boarding island stops should include shelters, seating, wayfinding and passenger information wherever possible. The shelter should be located at sufficient distance from crosswalk over the bike lane to allow visibility between people and people on bicycles and people exiting the island. Leaning rails may be located along this gap. Install leaning rails along the edge of the island along the bike channel on portions of the island without a shelter or accessible boarding area and boarding islands can be extended to include bike parking. The boarding platform must be a minimum span covering the length of buses flying on the road. For proper functioning and for greater safety, the island should be of different colors and surface textures from the adjacent pavement and reflective devices edge lighting should also be used to delineate the islands for nighttime uses. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. You can write your comments 
in the comment box.